Good evening, ladies and gentlemen. If you are here today at 5.30 in Frankfurt, that means that you have a genuine interest into <laughs> the topic that we are going to discuss today. Um, I guess it's less impossible as a job as you emphasized uh, for a very simple reason. Uh, for me, fr looking at these very different countries from the outside, there is one very clear common denominator and that is uh, these, uh, these days here in Frankfurt and uh, overall we speak a lot about the globalization that is currently occurring in the publishing industry uh, with huge new markets popping up into our uh, vision of uh, what books in this world are but uh, we more and more forget that book publishing on a global level does not only consist of those places where we have Amazon, uh, which is a little bit comparable to the old days when we thought that the world was only made of those countries where we've had uh, Coca-Cola. Uh, we have a lot of countries where we not only have no Amazon, but which have very rich local um, book cultures, reading cultures, different scriptures, uh, as we will see in a second, um, and which are nevertheless very directly affected from the globalization process, but very often in a very challenging way, because everybody, including the local elites, are looking at uh, what's going on on the global st uh, uh, level and um, for the uh, local uh, booksellers, publishers, authors and reading audiences it is more and more difficult in a very dire economic environment to uh, continue their various traditions and, uh, and uh, keep on um, keeping their book markets and their, their book cultures alive. And I guess these three countries are very, very good examples to narrow down and understand more about that kind of diversity that we have and which is not in a very easy situation as we will see in a second. Uh, as Jana said, the reports are, uh, are very much um, uh, revolving around numbers because we thought it makes a lot of sense not just to have anecdotal evidence on the riches uh, of uh, what's going on in literature, say in Armenia, in uh, Georgia or in the Ukraine, but really also to have an assessment of the forces that characterize by the these dire straits, we see that each of these countries has uh, pursued a, a, a path of integration into um, a modern contemporary international standards by uh, subscribing, by, by, uh, by uh, becoming members of all the various professional international organizations, by adopting the ISBN system, by uh, signing all the copyright um, uh, agreements uh, and um, so becoming uh, a partner for uh, the in international book industry and book culture. One more thing uh, that characterizes all three countries is that a few, uh, uh, most of the market is uh, driven by very small busin uh, businesses, both in publishing and in book selling, but at the same time a few major local players uh, own roughly There is a lot of fuss of about Georgia nowadays. We all see the, the great stand. Uh, Georgia is uh, aspiring to be guest of honor in 2017 in Frankfurt, in case you didn't know about that. Um, the ministry is doing quite a lot of efforts to promote Georgian um, authors abroad, but how does the situation look from inside, so to say? Uh, given that the, if the average print run is 800 copies, um, where does this energy for positive changes come, come from? Because we see number of titles is on the rise. Um, it seems like a small but healthy uh, sector. It's, it's from outside, it looks like a little version of Czech Republic, for example, publishing wise. <coughs> yes, hello everybody, thank you for coming. Uh, yes, I was uh, quite uh, um, surprised by these figures, uh, especially by the average print runs, uh, because uh, uh, our publishing house average print runs is like 2,000, and 
I don't know uh, exactly uh, the printings of all the publishing houses, but uh, we are uh, in touch uh, with uh, with I mean main actors in publishing sector in Georgia, and our printings is quite similar. But uh, these figures of this average printing is due to the uh, appearance of the new players on publishing market. Uh, the small publishing houses who have uh, this kind of limited printers and uh, as I think uh, that one of the reasons for that is uh, the multiplication of this uh, small so size publishing. So it seems that there is a large role of the state being played in book publishing and nurses as an advisor to the Ministry of Culture uh, I just want to ask you to comment on this and, and um, tell us more uh, what is the vision of the state vis-a-vis -vis the development of book publishing in the country. Thank you very much. Uh, well, first of all, uh, I would like to later uh, check somehow the figures because 80% of the market, um, if we... If we consider that 80% of the market is just a textbook, maybe the sources of the information should be a little bit checked because uh, I'm not sure that all the publishing houses are involved in this uh, investigation, let's say research. Uh, the role of the government and the state order uh, has some contradicting uh, opinions among the publishers. Some of them say that with the state order, government uh, uh, somehow closes the ways that they would like to work but at the same time they print books with a state order so uh, I think that it should be uh, the, the process should be uh, with some evolution not just cutting all the state order and uh, leaving the market for the publishers to print uh, and we each year we uh, change a little bit and because the program is not just a state order but we also have the support program where uh, the government supports the, the books uh, with and not or not order uh, all, all the copies and uh, each year we um, um, make the support program larger and decrease the state order this is the way uh, the government sees the uh, development of the market uh, and the support comes also goes also not not for the uh, uh, printing publishing of the books but also for some projects literary projects uh, that uh, fostered and uh, also um, bring new uh, contacts networks for the publishers and uh, foreign writers uh, and some some of the results are here uh, on on the table where uh, when we invite the different writers from from the world and then translate support the translation of their works into Armenian and also uh, one of the support ways was the organizing of the events of uh, World Book Capital that was uh, last year and the process was not only for done not only for 2012 but it, it has started from 2010 uh, it was uh, it, it was involving uh, exhibitions in different countries but the p participating in the exhibitions, international exhibitions, and also uh, mm, organizing uh, Armenian book exhibitions in uh, different cities of the world. Uh, I think that uh, it, all, all the countries that were in the Soviet Union uh, are passing this process of going to the market and leaving, leaving the publishers free from the state support or just a little, little support, giving them just a little support. But uh, I think we need time for that. Thank you. Well, 
in other countries of the world, publishers are pleading with the state for more state support. So <laughs> I don't know if it's about freedom from state support or freedom to work with some backup. Some of the publishers are against uh, the state. А охватить более э, широко ситуацию в Украине. В Украине существует э, э, много средних издательств, которые издают э, от 10 до 20 книжек. Значит, и существуют игроки, серьезные игроки. На издательском рынке это издательство «Фолио», издательство «КСД», это, это клуб семейного досуга, это «Бальтесман». Значит, при такой ситуации во многих издательствах Украины Существует издание как на русском, так и на украинском языке. Поэтому издательства, которые специализируются исключительно на украинском языке, находятся очень часто в проигранной ситуации по тиражам. Поэтому издательства, которые специализируются в Украине на издании украинских авторов, должны предоставлять продукцию очень высокого качества. То есть это должны быть самые лучшие украинские авторы. Эти издатели должны представлять этих авторов за границей, что они делают. Точно так же эти издатели не могут себе позволить делать некачественные переводы на украинский язык. Потому что они сразу же ну, находятся в проигрыше по э, финансам и количеству русских переводов, которые находятся, находятся на Украине, на территории Украины в связи с двоим. Я не могу сказать, что э, нам настолько плохо, чтобы плакать и говорить, что мы не будем издавать. Издательства практически не закрываются, только добавляются. У нас увеличивается количество не, небольших издательств. Э, добавляется э, большее количество издателей, которые издают фикшн, ну, то есть современную украинскую литературу, которая обращает на это внимание. И э, за последних несколько лет сформировалось уже, э, думаю, так до 10 издателей, которые постоянно посещают э, все центральные выставки э, в Европе. Это и Париж, это и Франкфурт, это и Лепсих, и которые э, знают, как предлагать э, украинских авторов э, на той же выставке Франкфурта своим коллегам, как продавать своих авторов хорошо а, иностранным издателям. Давно известно, что издать книжку – это вообще не проблема. Проблема – получить свои деньги назад с магазинов, которые продают. Потому что все мы умеем прекрасно издавать книги. Потенциала у нас достаточно. Практически в издательствах Украины все люди с высшими, а то есть с двумя высшими образованиями. И за 20 лет мы только лучше стали издавать книги. А вот получить свои деньги с продажи, это уже сложно. So if I am, a, say, a, an Armenian teenager or a Georgian teenager who wants to read one of the international bestsellers for my age, like Harry Potter, would I read it first in Russian, in English, or in uh, oh, uh, Armenian or Georgian? Concerning teenagers, it shows it will be in uh, Georgian or in English, but not in Russian. If uh, the uh, reader, if reader, if some reader is uh, uh, attracted by Russian books, I should say that it's from uh, uh, from elder people. I mean, it's not teenager or above uh, the age of 30, for example, 
it's yeah. Well, in Armenia, I think we have mostly, in case of foreign language books, mostly they are Russian, not English. Well, it's uh, in, Ge in Georgian case, I think there is also political, some political reasons. In Armenia, we still have mostly Russian-speaking readers, Russian reading le readers, if it is not Armenian. That's why it can happen that some a child or a teenager or uh, somebody can read it first in Russian and then in Armenian. But I don't, don't see here any problem because it has its negative. It has its negative and positive sides, of course, and we, we, we know the negative. The positive is that we uh, we we go through a bigger market through a, through a language that we know, first of all, and the negative is that well the the, the prices of the books are depending. We we all know on the print runs, and the Russian book print runs are bigger and they are cheaper. That's why. It is much more easier to, to buy a, a Russian language book or, let's say, English language book than a local where we have not more than 2,000 copies print run. Karasov, uh, director of Publish House Znania. I not agree with uh, some questions, some features what my colleague from Ukraine say. Uh, for a first, uh, not complaint about the possibility to publish in Ukraine. Uh, I am sure that uh, Ukrainian publishers have more uh, copies, publish more copies than Armenian, uh, Georgian or Estonian, of course. Why, why complain of this? Not really a question, just a piece of information. Um, I actually work for an executive agency uh, which implements the culture program of the European Commission and we also fund literary translations. I just want to inform you that under the new Creative Europe program, we actually intend to open up to ENP countries. Of course, subject to the ENP countries acceding to the culture program or to the new Creative Europe program. But that would in fact mean that we would support translations from ENP countries into EU languages, but also the other way around. So I just wanted to offer this piece of information. It's subject to the countries acceding to the program, but it could be a real interesting opportunity to open up the markets 